Welcome to Debaco University, where here we're going to be looking at a video lecture to determine the refractive index of glass. Now, refractive index, abbreviated RI, uh, is looking at when light travels from one medium to another, its speed changes relative to the density of the medium, which is observed as the light bends traveling from one medium to the other. The speed of light, keep in mind, in a vacuum is represented by the letter C and is always the same. But when light moves from one medium and travels more slowly as it goes to another medium, as it's constantly being absorbed and re-emitted by the atoms in that material. Now the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum to the speed of light in another substance is defined as the index of refraction or refractive index. And it's represented in equations as the letter N for that substance. So if you look here, here's N. This is going to be referring to the refractive index. Now what does this actually look like? Well, up here, we notice that when light travels from one medium to another, it's bending because we have a change in the speed of that light. And what's kind of a neat experiment here is we have a glass with a piece of paper behind it with an arrow pointing in one direction. We fill it, that glass full of water and the arrow actually flip the uh, direction there because of a difference in refractive index. Now the refractive index uh, and probability, well, there's a database of refractive indexes uh, for different types of glass. And this helps determine an appropriate statistical probability that two pieces of glass share a common source. May not offer that exact match, but it can uh, increase the probability that yes, it's very likely or unlikely, a high probability or a low probability that those two pieces of glass will match one another. Now, how do we determine that refractive index? Well, we can use the submersion method. This is just kind of a quick, quote, down and dirty method of determining this. You'd place the glass or fragments of that glass into different liquids of known refractive indexes. If the piece of glass and a liquid have the same refractive index, the glass fragment will seem to disappear when placed in that liquid. And here is a prime example. We have a beaker. The liquid has the same refractive index as this column in this test tube, and we could see everything appears to disappear. Simply because they have the same refractive index, therefore they're kind of disappearing because we don't have that difference between those two substances occurring. Now we can also use a microscope, uh, submersion uh, along with a low power microscope. Now submerge fragments of glass in a liquid and then view them under a low power microscope using particularly a compound light microscope. And this is great for small pieces or small fragments that are found. And in this case, if the refractive index of the liquid and medium is different from the refractive index of the piece of glass, a halo-like ring appears around the edge of that glass. And we can see that here. The halo-like effect is called the Beck line. Looking a little bit more detail at this Beck line, you can kind of see an example of that here. Uh, it appears because the refracted light becomes concentrated around the edges of the glass fragment. And a Beck line is visible under a microscope when the glass and liquid have different refractive indices. So in this case, in the middle image here where they're both the same, Beck line's in the middle and they kind of all blur together and they kind of merge and we don't really see that Beck line developing. However, in this case, here we have the perimeter of the piece of glass, and we have the liquid being a lower refractive index than the actual glass piece. This halo-like effect, if you look at the perimeter of the glass, is located on the inside of that piece of glass. In contrast, if the liquid has a greater refractive index um, than the piece of glass, we have that same halo-like effect, but in this case, the halo-like effect is on the outside of the edges of the glass. So it's important now to identify the presence of a Beck line, because that will tell you that there is a difference in refractive indices between the glass piece and the liquid medium, but where that halo is found will tell you which one is greater. That can help you determine the approximate range of the refractive index for that piece of glass that you're investigating. So here's some uh, additional pictures showing the refractive index of the medium versus the glass, that liquid versus the glass, and that bending that's occurring. So here we see kind of that rays are kind of converging here. Uh, this is because the glass has a higher refractive index and the Beck line is seen on the inside. You can see that right here on that inside of that fragmented glass. Now in this case is the opposite where the glass has a lower refractive index. And the Beck line here is seen on the outside of that perimeter there because the rays are diverging. So it makes it a little bit clearer, kind of that true little halo effect. Here we're seeing the 
evidence of that clear outside, where that outside is, and where's the halo occurring in relation to that. If it's occurring on the inside, as we see here, that means the glass has a higher refractive index. And here, if that halo is occurring on the outside of that um, glass, this is a sign that the glass has a lower refractive index. Now here's just some examples of refractive index of known liquids. So if you had uh, something or a piece of glass that you thought ref what the refractive index was or for comparison, these are some common liquids that can be used um, for that Beck line determination. Now lastly here we can look at tempered versus non-tempered glass and when trying to make a distinction between tempered glass and non-tempered glass, um, particles a process known as annealing is used. And annealing is the slow heating and then cooling of that glass that alters the microstructure of the material causing changes in properties such as strength and hardness. Annealing alters refractive index value at for tempered glass greater than that of non-tempered glass so this can also act as a way for determining that when we're looking at um, knowing what the refractive index is for a piece of glass.